Now, the scripture that I think is really significant. The psalmist tells us that when a man makes an idol, he makes it like himself. Now, what does that mean? He takes whatever he's making this idol of, out of a piece of wood, piece of rock, whatever it is, and he carves it to look like himself. He makes it with eyes. He makes it with a nose. He makes it with ears. He makes it with legs and feet. He makes it with hands. But the psalmist tells us that no matter the fact that he's tried to make it like himself, it can't see, it can't smell, it can't taste, it can't talk, it can't hear. So it doesn't matter that you pray to it. It's a stick. It's a stick. Now it's one more thing. Not only is it a stick, like everything on this planet at the end, it's going to be destroyed. It has no power. Nothing. Well, you say, you know, we're modern people. We're way beyond this whole notion of worshiping sticks that have been carved into the shapes of people. Well, that's not what makes it an idol. What it makes it an idol is that somebody gives their time, their money, and their full attention to that thing to the exclusion of the reality and the truth of the only one true God. You know, when you talk about dumb idols, what are the things that can become an idol in our society? Let me tell you what it is. Us. We become our own God. Now, before we go that far, let me give you a little basic sociology, okay? And I'll try really hard not to be like the little girl's professor. The sociologist that I learned from was a born-again believer. And he had some interesting things to say. Have you ever seen a totem pole? Do you know where those come from? I don't mean who makes them. We know that those are made by indigenous people. But what was the purpose of a totem pole? Well, you see, tribal groups that were separated, they recognized that there were certain traits inherent in successful people that they wanted to communicate to their children. For example, if you were in threat from animals all the time, if you were good with a spear, that was a great thing. If you were there and it was important because the land mass was open, it was important to be able to see well. So they took the things that were important to communicate to their children and they made stories about them. Now you say, well, you know, that's ancient people. Really? Would you, would you participate in a little experiment with me, please? I'm going to start a sentence and I'm going to ask you to complete it because it's part of our culture too. Are you ready? Sly as a fox. Okay. Wise as an owl. Absolutely. You see, what they did was they ascribed traits to their objects of myth and to the animals that were around about them and they carved them and they put the one on top of another and originally they did it so that they could tell stories of the wisdom that's required to be sly and stealthy when you hunt to have the eyes of an eagle, eagle. Right. But then, over time, they began to lose the sense that the totems were a me mechanism to communicate a story. And they became their gods. 
Well, you see, something like that happens in our culture today. What happens? We become our own gods, and what we be, what we want becomes the most important thing in the world. Happiness is what I want, and what I want, I want it now. There are churches that preach a message that is just like that, and it is false. And that message is that faith, faith is the way that you rub the Aladdin's lamp that God is in. And when you rub it, your communication with God is based on the fact that he comes out of the lamp and says, well, what can I do for you? Well, God, I need this, and I need this, and I want that. And the only time some people ever talk to God, if they talk to him at all, is to present their gimme list. They never go to God and they say, Lord God, please do in me according to your will that I might be useful for your purposes. And we build religious totems telling people if you only believed independent of what his word teaches us. And then when the genie doesn't come out of the lamp, when God doesn't answer, people get angry at God, shake their fist at him. And they can't understand why God failed them. No, he didn't. It's because they didn't have a relationship. What they had was a mail order. That was it. And when the package didn't arrive, they had no more use for God. When our wants are above the needs of others, we have become our own God. You know what's one of the indications that somebody is really in danger of being their own God? When God gives us a job or he gives us money to live on, and despite that, we are so far in debt that if we miss one paycheck, we will go under so fast, it'll make people's heads spin. Why? Because we charged up every credit card we've got. Because we've taken loans for things we really didn't need. The biggest, the fastest, the newest, all those things. And we did it because, well, because we want it. And it's put us in a place or we are a slave. The scripture tells us that the borrower is a slave to the lender. Another indication of that we have become that we, that we have become our own God is when in reality we want no relationship with his written word. Why? Because it doesn't jive with the way we want things to be. We want to be able to look at the word like a smorgasbord. Well, I like that scripture. That's mine. But I don't like that one, so I, I'm not going to believe that. Another one is when we hang, at, hang out with those who reinforce our fleshly lusts. You say, well, I don't hang out with any bad people. Really? Well, tell me about the TV programs you watch. You know what? There are people whose lives have been destroyed because of what they have let in to the hearts and minds of themselves and their children. Don't believe me? People are asking questions today about why young teenagers will walk into a school with a rifle or a handgun that they've stolen and not appropriated lawfully and shoot their fellow classmates. And you know what one of the common things they're finding when they investigate these shootings? The time they spent with video games that over and over and over again reinforced the, the notion that it is somehow manly to murder. They became their own God. 
what God had to say didn't matter anymore. And that raises the question, folks, what are we allowing into the gateway of the hearts and minds of our children? Do you really know what they're looking at on that smartphone? Do you really know on the computer what sites they're accessing? How many times do families get together around a dinner, dinner table today and don't even talk to each other and every single one of them is on that stinking device? How many times have you watched, walked through a grocery store and almost had somebody run into you because they can't get separated from that iPad long enough to look up and see they're about to run into you? We've all had that experience. They're glued to it. They can't escape from social media. Their thoughts and their opinions are formed by what they read from others on Facebook, Twitters, all that. It's not the Word of God that they're interacting with. Everything they think and believe is being shaped and formed by others. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols. Dumb idol when it's abused. Remember when we used to have telephones that were hooked to a cord in the house and you could actually get away and have some peace? All you had to do is not be in the house. However you were led. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, the 44th chapter, it tells a story, and I won't read it to you. I'm just going to tell you about it. It begins in about the 13th verse. And what it says is a carpenter, when he gets ready to build a thing, an idol, he starts out with uh, stretching out a ruler. And he marks off how he's going to make it. And he takes a compass and he draws the circles in it so he knows where he's going to cut. And then it says that he forms it into the figure of a man. And he gives it eyes and he gives it ears. He gives it a nose and a mouth. And he gives it arms, and he gives it legs, and he gives it feet. He gives it all that stuff. And then he takes this stick that he's formed in his own image, and he puts it in a predominant place in his house so that he can venerate that thing. And he knows that it came from a stick. How does he know that? Because he went out and cut down the wood. It says he cut down the oak and he cut down the cypress. As a matter of fact, he planted other trees. He planted the stinking tree and he watered it and it grew up. But now when he cuts the tree down, he uses some of it to put in the fireplace and bake his bread. He knows it's just garbage. It's something to be burnt. And then he takes some of it and he heats his house with it so that it'll be warm. But then he carves this thing after his own image. And now he bows down to it and says, Oh, rescue me. I need all these things. And he can't hear. He can't talk. He can't see. But because it's the custom of the day, he does this. And it's sheer stupidity. Because he just saw it. One stick he picked up and threw in the fireplace. It had no value except for burning up. And he takes the other one and makes a god out of it. Both are due to perish in due time. That's not a god. But unfortunately, our country is in desperate shape because we've done identically the same thing. We have honored and revered things that are going to perish. 
And the reality is people's lives have been destroyed because of their quest for money. Their lives have been destroyed because of pursuing avenues for the expression of the lusts of their own flesh. Destroyed for substance abuse. Destroyed because of relationships they've entered into with others who had no godly commitment to a covenant with their God. Marriages without substance. And then finally, people who are involved in those kinds of relationships, having pushed the one true God, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, because they found no satisfaction in those things, and it's damaged their lives and their thinking, they become angry, shaking their fist in the face of God. Our Supreme Court has done just that lately shaking their fist in the face of God in the rulings that they've made. We have elected leaders who were elected by people who have no heart for God and they are leaders without a heart for God who allow riots and the destruction of businesses. For those who enter into agreements in secret places that they might enrich themselves to vote in a certain way and a people who are entering into a plan to destroy the last vestiges of a nation that once owed its existence to the God of this Bible. Do you know why there are public schools? The reason there are public schools, the original reason, was to teach children to read the Bible. Because it was recognized that that was the skill every child needed to have to know God in a personal way and to have their thinking adjusted to the way he thinks. Well, we're just about to verse 3. Verse 2 again, you know that you were Gentiles.